What's going on guys? We're back here again today. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys as always for stopping in. So on today's video, I think it's about time. We're gonna go ahead and do a full mod breakdown on the Project A3. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these. We've got a lot of new subscribers. Figured now would be a good time just to do a quick little rundown as far as the comprehensive mod list as far as everything on the Project A3. So just a brief introduction for you guys in case you didn't already know. Here is my car, 2016 Audi A3 Quattro 2.0T Premium Plus S-Line. We're also currently running APR Stage 2 software on 93 octane high output file with the APR DSG2. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off everything on the front end engine related here, and we'll go ahead and work our way back. So as you can see, starting off with airflow mods, we've got our APR carbon fiber intake, always looking nice and fresh under the hood. We can always appreciate some carbon fiber goodness. And of course, you got your secondary air filter, which is required for the GTI as well as the A3. And you can see working our way back, we've got the carbon fiber inlet pipe that replaces like that ugly accordion style plastic tube piece. So a nice little touch there. Now, aside from the APR carbon fiber intake system you see here, not visible from under the hood, but we do have the APR turbo muffler delete as well as the APR aluminum turbo inlet elbow. I've covered the benefits of those parts in other videos, so make sure to leave a link somewhere up here if you guys wanna check that out in more detail. All right, now working our way back here, you can see we've got our turbo and our downpipe. This car is APR stage two on 93 octane with the high output file from APR. And we've got our APR three inch catted downpipe. Definitely a must have exhaust mod for stage two. You guys make sure to check that out if you are in the market for a good, reliable, free flowing downpipe. I've had this downpipe for quite a while now and it's been very consistent and reliable. I've had no issues. Sounds great, flows great. Downpipe is by far your best mod as far as dollars per horsepower, as far as picking up some more gains. Now, one other thing I'll mention when we're on the topic of engine related mods, I am running the Audi RS7 spark plugs and the Audi RS3 ignition coils. Once again, I've talked about that in some other videos as far as like the basics of your ignition upgrades. I do get a lot of questions about ignition, so I just wanted to briefly cover that while we're on the topic of engine related mods. Now, one other very important performance mod I will cover is the APR intercooler. A little bit difficult to see from the exterior of the car. However, I will show you a close up in just a second here. Now, of course, behind me, you can see that is my factory intercooler, which I obviously no longer have installed in the car. Very undersized, not the best, kind of cheap, flimsy, plastic tube and fin design. It's definitely a massive improvement moving up to something better like an aftermarket intercooler, such as this APR unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys quickly. As you guys can see, just behind the grill here and the AC condenser, you see those larger welds? That right there is the APR intercooler. So definitely a massive improvement over stock, able to keep up with stage two power, cut down on heat soak. It is very important to make sure we keep those temperatures down to of course maximize the gains. So now let's go ahead and move around to the back of the car and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the exhaust. So as far as the catback exhaust I'm running here, this is the Miltec three inch stainless non-resonated catback. I've posted a couple videos about this, which I'll go ahead and link up here somewhere, just in case you want to check those out. And it's, it's been a good exhaust system overall. Guys, please forgive me, my car is super dirty with all this pollen here coming out for spring, so I do apologize. But again, Miltec exhaust, great fitment, looks good, sounds good, and not too loud. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and move into wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension. Now, as far as wheels, tires, and suspension, this car right here, you can see you've got not too much wheel gap. I'm running a set of H&R Sport Springs. Definitely brings it down to a nice tighter stance. No clearance issues, no rubbing, no problems. I'm happy with it. I think the ride is great. Perfect fitment, not too low. I would highly recommend checking them out if you guys are in the market for an affordable set of comfortable springs that'll work great for a daily driver. Now, as far as the tires go, you can see we've got the Continental Extreme Contact all seasons. I've been very pleased with them. Very comfortable tire, balance is great, very smooth, quiet operation. The Continental Extreme Contact is a great option for somebody that wants a nice, high performance, all season tire. Great for a Quattro vehicle like this A3, so we don't have to worry about going back and forth with snow tires versus summer tires. 
Now, of course, in the summertime, it would be nice to have a dedicated summer tire, but that's just not something I really feel like I need with the intended purpose of my car being like a modified daily. Now, as far as the wheels, this is a set of Alzor wheels, which if you guys are not familiar with that brand, that is the ECS Tuning house brand. Very reasonably priced. I picked up this set of 19s for around 450, 500 bucks, and they've been really good. So it's a 19 by eight and a half, 35 offset. This is the 040 style with the machine face, and I've really enjoyed them. I think it's a good set of wheels, very basic, nothing too flashy, and it really fits for what I do with the car. Now, unfortunately, they're extremely dirty right now with all this brake dust and pollen, so please forgive me, guys. Now, as far as brakes, I'm running the ECS Tuning Stage 3 Big Brake Kit. Really nice. I've been a huge fan of these for quite a while now. I think the Stage 3 kit is a really good option for a lot of people. I like the four piston calipers. They're pretty massive. I'm running the EBC Red Stuff pads, so they really provide a nice responsive bite. And of course, you've got these really nice 352 millimeter cross-drilled slotted two-piece rotors. Excellent brake kit. I would highly recommend it. Probably one of the best options out there for the money. Of course, you can get the calipers in different colors. I just went with the black. Kind of a nice stealthy approach, nothing too flashy. So like I said, ECS tuning, stage three, big brake kit. Fantastic option. I think the calipers look really good. I think they stop incredibly well. A massive improvement over the single pot stock calipers. So if you guys are thinking about going big brakes, you want like a pretty good all around, relatively affordable option. I would definitely take a look at the stage three kit from ECS. Just expect with running one of these kits, you're gonna get a lot more brake dust, but not the end of the world. Now, very briefly, I would like to cover a couple other drivetrain related upgrades. I'm running the APR pendulum and dog bone mounts. I would highly recommend you guys check out some type of pendulum or dog bone mount. It's a great way to improve the quality of your shift points. You get a lot more rigidity throughout the entire drivetrain and you also help prevent wheel hop as well as unnecessary engine movement. So I make sure to check those guys out. It really will make an improvement as far as the overall drivability of your car once you start pushing more power. I just thought I would cover those very briefly on this mod list breakdown. And of course this list would be complete if I didn't mention probably my personal all-time favorite mod for this car. And that of course is gonna be this beautiful perforated leather wrapped flat bottom S3 steering wheel. I actually picked up this wheel a couple years ago from an international seller from uh, Germany. And I had it shipped over here, got here at a reasonable amount of time. It's a simple plug and play swap. There's no additional programming or coding to get the paddle shifters to work. That is one thing I feel like all of these cars should come standard. And that of course is with paddle shifters for the DSG. So I've been super happy with this wheel, one of my personal favorite mods on this car. Of course, these really nice beefy 10 and 2 notches. This gives you a really good grip, feels very nice in the hands. And of course, as you guys can see, this is a really nice flat bottom wheel. It's really comfortable. I just, I love the way it looks just so aggressive in the car. Really makes a huge improvement overall. So I would have to say that's gotta be my favorite mod I've done on this car. Now, another great addition to this beautiful paddle shifter steering wheel are these Leo Motorsport paddle extensions. I'm a big fan of these just because the factory paddle shifters, as you can see, are really small. Sometimes they can be a little bit difficult to grab, just depending on like the position of your wheel. So with the paddle shifter extensions, it's much more comfortable. You can easily grab those paddles from pretty much any position on the steering wheel. I have seen some other paddle shifter extensions on the market and a lot of times I feel like they just kind of get in the way because they stick out too far. I don't find that that's a problem at all with these. You can really get a nice solid grab on your paddles from pretty much any position on the wheel and I don't feel like they really become intrusive in any way. So I'll definitely check them out. Leo Motorsport paddle extensions. Now something else I'll mention here. This is a recent mod I've installed not too long ago. This is the USP Motorsports burnout box. This is really cool specifically because you can switch from front wheel drive to all wheel drive with the click of a button. So hence the name burnout box, just in case you need to do a pretty nasty burnout, light up some tires, you can go ahead and press the front wheel drive button and that's gonna disconnect your Haldex. I don't use it very often seeing as I'm not some super cool drag racing guy, but for front wheel drive pulls on the dyno, this is the way to do it. So you don't have to worry about problems. So check out the USP Motorsports burnout box. It's a pretty simple mod. I've got a full video showing the installation process. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Now, another mod I will mention, once again, not visible from the exterior of the car, and that is going to be the APR rear sway bar. I think it's a great step in the right direction as far as handling mods. It's a good way to help keep the car more planted, 
during turns. You've got better cornering, better handling. You've got a lot less body roll. So that is something that you can pick up for a pretty reasonable price. And of course, it's a much more simplistic install than the front sway bar. So make sure to check that out. Well, thank you guys so much for checking out today's full modless breakdown for the Project A3. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. I appreciate all the likes, all the shares, all the subscribers. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.